Hello, welcome to the fourth section of the course, working with application logic and data. In this section, we'll first learn about simple and basic strategy to save and retrieve data locally from the device, then proceed to learn how to retrieve data from an API and send data to an API. We'll then establish communication with web sockets. Moving on, we'll integrate persistent database functionality with Realm. We'll then mask the application and synchronize the locally persisted data. Finally, we log into Facebook and share content and track applications. Now we move on to the first video of this section, storing and retrieving data locally. In this video, we'll be learning about simple and basic strategies to save and retrieve data locally from the device. We'll create a simple app with a text input and two buttons, one to save the content of the field and one to load the existing content. We'll use the async storage class to achieve our goal. One of the most important aspects of developing an application is handling data. This data may come locally from the user, may be served by a remote server that exposes API, or on most business applications will be some combination of both. You may wonder what strategies are best for dealing with data, or how to even accomplish simple tasks such as making an HTTP request. Luckily, React Native makes your life that much simpler by providing mechanisms for easily dealing with data. When developing a mobile app, we need to consider the network challenges. A well-designed app will allow the user to continue using the app without internet connection. This will require the app to save data locally on the device when there's no internet connection, and then sync with the server when the network is available again. Another challenge to overcome is the fact that network connectivity might be slow or limited. In order to improve the performance of our app, we should save some data on the local device to avoid stressing our server API. First, we need to create an empty app named Saving Locally. Then we need to create the main app.js file inside the source folder. We're going to work on this file to save and load the data on the local device. Now, open the index.ios.js and index.android.js files. Remove the existing code present there and add this code in its place. Here, we're just registering our app. Now, if we run our app now, it won't work. This is because we need to create the main app component. So, open the main app.js file, import all the dependencies. Next, we'll create the class. Here we have created a key constant to set the name of the key we'll use to save the content. On the state, we have two properties. The text property is used to keep the value from the text input component, and the stored values is used to load and show the current stored value. Now we'll load the existing stored value. Here we'll display the content on the UI when the app loads. Therefore, we need to read the local value when the component is about to be mounted. Moving on, we'll now create onload function. The onload function loads the current content from the local storage. It's as easy as just using the key for the data we want to retrieve. The async storage class allows us to save data on the local device. On iOS, this is accomplished by using dictionaries on text files. On Android, things are slightly different. It will use RocksDB or SQLite, depending on what's available. Here we're loading the current saved data. The async storage API contains a getItem method. This method receives the key we want to retrieve as a parameter. We're using the await async syntax here, as this call is asynchronous. After we get the value, we just set it to state. This way we'll be able to render the data on the view. Saving the data is simple as well. We only need to use a key to save anything we want. This is the code for saving data. Here we're saving text from the state. Using the setItem method, we can set a new key with any value we want. This call is asynchronous, therefore we either need to use promises or the new await async syntax. Now we need to define a function to save the value from the input text of a state. When the value of the input changes, we'll get the new change and set it to the state. Our UI will be very simple. It will just be a text to render the saved content, text input component to allow the user to enter a new value, and two buttons. For the UI, we're creating render method. Since we have two buttons, one button will call the onload function to load the current value, and the other, that is on save, will save the value from the input. Finally, let's add some styles. Here we've added some colors, paddings, and margins, etc. So, now run your app. 
you can see that we can write something and can save it. When we save it, we get the message successfully saved the data. Also, we can load the data, we get the data which we saved. Great, isn't it? That's all in this video. In this video, we stored and retrieved data locally.